Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be teaching you how to stop suppressing your emotions. And I've got a few videos in this series that will touch on this subject. And this is the first video in this series. So I'm so excited for you to be here today if you're drawn to this topic. Uh, my name is Monica Yearwood. I'm an Ayurvedic practitioner and founder of Hamza Ayurveda and Yoga in Chicago, where I create customized retreats for men and women who are looking to heal from physical issues as well as emotional ones. So that could be anything from if they have a digestive issue or if they're going through divorce or just a recent loss of a loved one. And I also have a 10 week virtual program that I created specifically for successful men and women who are in business or in medicine and who struggle to prioritize their health and are starting to see the symptoms of that neglect, such as excess weight or digestive issues or anxiety and depression. And regardless of whatever program that any of my clients are in, discussing emotional suppression is a huge, huge part of my work. And so I'm so excited to explore this topic with you today. You're going to get step-by-step -step practices that you can start using straight away that will help you to become conscious of emotions that you may have been suppressing and how to identify if the emotions that you have been suppressing have been contributing to disease processes in your body or physical pain. So if you haven't yet, please grab a pen and a piece of paper because there's so much that you're going to be learning today and I'm so excited for you and what you're going to be receiving. So the first thing that I want to do is an assessment and a personal inventory. So please mark any and all of these that may sound like you. Do you have chronic pain in your body? Back pain, neck pain, achingness. Maybe you've seen a physical therapist or an acupuncturist, but you do not seem to be able to get relief for these physical pains. Do you have digestive issues like acid reflux, chronic bloating, irritable bowel syndrome? Do you feel irritated throughout the day? People are bothering you, things that people say, or you just feel the sort of constant chronic low line annoyance or irritation. Do you genuinely enjoy your work? And sometimes you use that belief to justify how much you do it, but underneath it all, you know that you'd be more effective if you took more time for yourself. Do you have a hard time saying no, but you feel like your body is starting to tell you to slow down? You may feel irritable, anxious, or empty. You also may have gained weight, developed a digestive issue, or an autoimmune condition. You may also worry that you're heading for a major burnout. Do you have a hard time communicating your feelings or needs to the people that you care about in your life? Do you tend to attract partners that either demean you or don't understand you? So if you said yes to any one or more of these things, then that is a really strong sign that you are suppressing your emotions. So when you stop suppressing your emotions, not only will you be relieved of physical pain and physical sensations, but you'll also improve your intuition. So your intuition and your emotions are very strongly connected to each other. As long as you're suppressing your emotions, you're not able to access your intuition fully because your intuition communicates to you based on your feelings. So while you do this work, you're going to unearth your intuitive sense of people, you're going to improve your empathy and your emotional intelligence, be able to sense how other people are doing. You're also gonna increase your own self-awareness, self-awareness around your boundaries and what your personal needs are. And this is going to improve your relationships totally across the board because you cannot be in authentic relationship if you are not authentic yourself. So there are many consequences of suppressing our emotions. Not only does it impact the types of relationships that we are attracted to, our inability to be authentic or express our needs, and increases the likelihood of not following our truth, our inner path, and winding up many places that we may not want to be or with people that we may not really want to be with but it also can foster disease processes in the body. And now we have so much scientific research to show and prove how this is true. Emotional stress increases inflammation in the body. 
And I would say it's not so much the stressors in our life because those are always going to be there. Those have always been there since the dawn of time for human beings. But our interpretation and our ability to cope correctly with stress or well with stress is what has really, really depreciated over time. And so it's stress mismanagement, our inability to deal with stress on a stress-oriented mindset that increases inflammation in the body, specifically in our digestion. So emotional stress can manifest as many different digestive issues like acid reflux or irritable bowel syndrome or even colitis or Crohn's disease. I recently read a study where they gave the participants who had cancer psychological evaluations. And the therapists who looked at these profiles were able to determine who had cancer and who did not have cancer just based on how they answered their psychological assessments. And the people that had cancer, again, had higher likelihood of not being able to say no and communicate their feelings or their needs. Rheumatoid arthritis, ALS, and many other diseases are showing high correlations with emotional suppression. And it is so wonderful that we now have the science to show us what happens when we suppress our emotions. But this is something that many ancient systems, such as Ayurveda, which is what I practice, have been teaching for thousands of years, which is basically that we are not these compartmentalized creatures. We are one. Our mind, our body, our emotions, our spirituality is all interconnected. Every time you have a thought, it has a different chemical reaction in the body. So a stressful, angry, hurried, vengeful thought has a very different chemical reaction in your body than a happy or a calm thought. So in this video, I wanted to teach you the first thing that you need to do to stop emotionally suppressing. This needs to start happening right away and can happen right away without you know, creating a huge upheaval in your life or some kind of intense cathartic release. And so this is the first thing that, that really needs to happen for you to start doing this work and to do the, the additional steps that I'm gonna be teaching you over the next several videos. And so that is that you need to stop suppressing your emotions, the new ones that come in every day. And so for most of us, when we don't feel good, we have a really hard time with that. You know, we, we, we grasp immediately to try to feel better. And the Buddhists say that we're constantly running away from what feels bad and running toward what feels good. And this can keep us in, you know, these locks and cycles of pain, aversion, and addictions of all kinds. So the first thing that we need to do is create space in our life to actually feel these unpleasant emotions. If you're going through a difficult time in life, then you still probably need to compartmentalize things to a certain extent. In other words, put it aside until it's appropriate for you to actually feel what it is that you are going through. However, most of us suppress because we don't like not feeling good. And so our knee-jerk reaction is to immediately try to feel better. And so there are four primary ways that human beings suppress. And maybe you can relate to one or more of these. So the first way of suppression is to do it consciously is to intentionally and consciously deci decide that you don't want to feel the feeling and to push it away. The second way that we suppress is unconsciously. And so this is when a feeling just, it is so intense and it just bypasses our conscious awareness completely and we suppress it without even knowing that we're doing it. And then years later, something happens and it creeps up on us. The third way that we suppress is to avoid it. So just by, you know, not thinking about it, somebody tries to talk to us about something and we say, no, not now. We just really are avoiding feeling the feeling associated with that conversation. And the fourth way is projection. And so that is when we uh, give somebody or something else <laughs> responsibility for how we are feeling. She, they, or it are making me feel this way. The traffic made me angry. The person made me sad. But really, all of our emotions are ready inside of us. The external factors in our life are really just triggers for that emotional feeling. If you see two different people in traffic and somebody cuts both of those people off, one person is able to say, oh, you know, maybe they're having a bad day or maybe they get a little scuffled and then let them go by. 
while the other person just flips out and you know is yelling at the other person and has total road rage. So did that person cutting them off make them feel that way or make the person who totally went into a rage about it, did they give them that rage? No, their emotional state was already within them. There was an external trigger and that trigger was the avenue for them to express those emotions and feelings that were already within. So most of us are doing this all the time, projecting our feelings and our emotions to the external factors that are going on in our life. So if you feel chronically irritated, annoyed throughout your day, just take a pause and ask yourself, you know, what's the emotion behind this or where is this really coming from? Or if you find yourself constantly annoyed with somebody in your life, just to ask yourself if there's an emotion that you are suppressing or that you haven't communicated. And maybe that's a real reason why you feel annoyed, irritable, or critical. So those major ways of suppressing our emotions are what we want to uh, refrain from doing. And if we do do them, to do it consciously. You know, um, wow, I'm really feeling this way. I'm going through a hard time right now, but I have to be able to work. So I have to be able to avoid this feeling or put this aside right now so I can focus on my work. That's much different than, you know, doing it unconsciously when you don't know you're doing it or just trying to avoid it completely. And then when you get into a safe space, literally, and ideally you do it when it's happening, but that's not always possible. But to sit with the feeling itself, try not to avoid it. Try not to call a friend and, you know, vent about it. Uh, sometimes venting is actually just another way of suppressing the emotion. You think that you're releasing it, you think that you're talking it out, but actually you're just kind of rehashing it. So when you get into a safe space, avoid the four primary ways that most of us suppress the emotion and instead, instead allow yourself to feel it. Allow yourself to feel the irritation, the criticism, etc. And then notice the thoughts that come with it. Because our thoughts and our beliefs are attached to feelings. So you'll notice that as the feeling comes up, it's attached to thoughts and beliefs and ideas. And it's the attachment between the thought and the feeling that allows it to be stored as a memory. And we're gonna get into this in the later lessons as we learn how to deal with these kinds of things. But as you're able to detach the feeling from the thought, then you can work to reframe it and to put it into a different perspective that's more empowering for you, serves you better. But for now, in this lesson, I just want you to stop trying to avoid your feelings or suppress them consciously or unconsciously and give yourself space and time to feel, to actually feel and to sit with it. And sometimes it's really uncomfortable to feel those feelings. And you'll notice that when you sit with it and you feel it, something amazing happens, which is that it runs its course and, and its process. And you will start to be able to let it go authentically, not in a way where you're suppressing it, but genuinely letting it go. So thank you so much for your time and your attention today. Uh, again, I have a virtual program right now that I've created specifically for men and women in business who struggle to make their health a priority and are starting to suffer the consequences of that neglect. So that could be excess weight or digestive issues, stress mismanagement, eating a really poor diet, not exercising, not taking care of your physical body, overwhelmed with stress. If you need help with that, I can help you. And so I'm offering free consultations to men and women who are in business or medicine and are suffering from this particular issue. The consultation is 45 minutes long, and in that session, my promise is to give you an assessment of your problem and to give you a high level of overview on how to fix your problem. So to apply, you can go to monicayearwood.org forward slash apply, or you can click the link below this video. So if you are looking for help and you're ready to overcome this and develop healthy, balanced life, emotional coping and stress management practices in your life so that you can have longevity, vitality, resilience, healthy immune system, and improve your relationships 
and your career and everything across the board that improves when you become a really, really healthy person, then I'd love to speak with you about it. Otherwise, stay tuned for the next part in the series where we are going to explore the unconscious and the shadow.